Hello everyone and welcome back to Hellstone Wargaming. If you are new here then welcome to the channel. My name is Mikey. Today we're going to be looking at the brand new Elgu Mars 2 Pro which is a, a 3D printer by Elgu. It is a resin 3D printer. I actually recently bought the Elgu Saturn which was a pre-order. I think that's going to be coming to Amazon pretty soon, probably the end of November. I bought that one and I did a review. I did like an unboxing review and Elegoo, the company that makes these printers, saw that video, liked it so much, decided to send me this one to open and review as well. So thank you very much to Elgu for sending this printer. They also sent me some water washable resin, which is a new type of resin where usually you have to wash resin prints after curing to get the excess resin off in isopropyl alcohol. But this is water wash resin so you wash this with essentially tap water you don't wash it in the sink but you can use normal household tap water to wash your prints before curing so i've never used this stuff so i'm going to try it out so this essentially has a better screen than the original mars this has a 2k screen and the the guys over at elgo told me that this resin is better suited because it's a mono 2k screen so we're going to be trying out this brand new resin i believe it's clear it just says green i pretty i'm not sure if it's i think i hope it's clear it should be really fun and we're going to be unboxing this setting it up doing the print and seeing what we come out like i've got a cool 40k themed bus i'm really excited to print and yeah let's have a look okay they just love unboxing videos <laughs> Oh, it's red, not yellow. It said yellow on the, on the front. But we've got the user manual. Should be relatively straightforward. This will tell you how to set everything up. Got some FEP film. So this goes in the bottom of the vat. This is replacement. Essentially with the way the resin printing works, you print onto a film and then there's a plate that peels it off the film. So you need to replace that if it gets damaged. We've got a little chunky toolbox. Let's have a look what we've got. We have a power supply and power brick. Handy metal scraper, got a few of those now. Spare bits, paint filters. I actually just ran out and had to buy like ginormous ones. <laughs> It comes with this little clip, which is really handy. I actually tried printing one of these for my Saturn, but it's essentially what you do is when your print's finished, you can this can set this up and use it as like a drain feature. So your, your build plate will sit at an angle and drip off into the back into the vat. Carbon paper filters and clippers. A 10% off from my manufacturer. Hello. <laughs> Plastic scraper for the film. I wouldn't recommend using this on the actual film because it can damage the film and they aren't... They aren't exactly expensive, but it's also something you don't want to keep buying. We've got a memory stick, we've got some gloves, and we've got a little pot as well. We've also got this new addition, which is a seal for the lid, because the Mars 2 Pro actually comes with some carbon filters, which is actually really nice. So it's not that what the Saturn comes with, it's not what the, any other printer I've seen comes with, so it's kind of nice that they've kind of taken these precautionary steps. Like, it's not too bad to get air-wise in short doses, as long as it's in like a, like a nicely ventilated area, but if you've got it in like a little office with no windows, then you need to do something you don't want to be just relying on <laughs> just keeping the door open or something so make sure you if you do have a printer if you make sure it's in a well ventilated area but with this one with the carbon filters you just even even more safe so okay and then the bad boy the little mars it's so small <laughs> in a nice way not in a bad way <laughs> I'm so used to the Saturn because the Saturn was my first printer. Well, my first resin printer anyway. And so the Mars is actually a lot smaller than I realized. But I think this will be nice. It's a nice desktop size. I'm not trying to insult it too much. Sorry, I'll do. But, but yeah, it's, it's really cute actually. I really like it. <laughs> here we go. Money shot. Coolio, yeah. what we got? Hello? There we go. So they're, I will say they're all really well packed, these. So we've got our little bill plate. It looks like the same as the Saturn. I know the Mars was different. I believe it's sandblasted. I presume it's better for getting like grip onto the model because it's textured. Yeah, it has it has like a texture which you will find if you if you when you print, you will have a small texture on the bottom. For me, most of the time it doesn't matter because the bottom of the print is usually the bottom, so it doesn't matter. And there we go. We've got the Z-axis, looks pretty sturdy, looks in good shape. It's really, it's, it's really light. I will say there's no support at the top for the Z-axis, which is quite surprising. Normally I'd expect it to go into here, but I guess because of the quite rugged system that they've got, they don't need it. We've got USB at the front, which is very handy. On the Saturn, it's on the side, which I actually find quite annoying, but there you go. But yeah, on this, in this one, you got this little thing here, which is the carbon filter. So that'll take all the air and filter it before it actually exports it. That's really cool. This is our vat. So this is actually what you'll put the resin in. You'll put the resin in here up to the max fill line, which is nice as well. 
this is where the prints will evolve from. We've got a low profile knob, which is a, which is a new addition. Because what we found is if when the build plate gets too high, the, they had like a large knob which pushed the top up. But now we don't have that, which is nice. Okay, so let's film some B-roll footage. Let's get it on and uh, let's have a look. Okay, so once we've unboxed it and we've had a look, we've got the seal on, we've got the build plate in, we can turn it on. So the satin came with some leveling paper, but this doesn't. So you just use normal A4 paper. So I'll just go and grab some. But essentially, you'll take these two screws out and remove the vat, like so. Then we'll go into tools, we'll go manual, and then you can raise the bed up and down like so. We're gonna undo the plate first. So you can level it. So we'll undo this one. We'll just hold on. We'll hold on to the build plate just in case because we don't want it to fall onto the screen. <laughs> oh, it's a little bit tight that screw, but the build plate is nice and loose. Then what we'll do, we'll place an A4 piece of paper, uh, which doesn't fit. <laughs> so we'll take an A4 piece of paper and... Wow! There we go, A5, magic. So we'll place that in there. And then we'll go to set home. Go home. I can't see. Once we've done that, everyone, we'll line up as straight as possible. We'll press down and we'll tighten the front one first. Tighten that one up as well. So we'll nip it up a bit. And then we'll tighten up properly. And then we'll go up 10 times. We'll return our little vat. I said make sure you've got the LCD film removed, but don't remove any of the black tape. And then the bottom of the film will have something on it as well, some film. Uh, I played a battle report the other day here, and Tank brought his nice terrain, but it is leaking art <laughs> arctic little bits everywhere. So I'm trying to make sure I don't get any of those in the vat. Place that back in there. Place that back in there. Tighten up the screws. And that is it. And then we're ready to 3D print something. So what I'll do is I'll go and set up the model, build all the supports, we'll have a look at what we're gonna print, and then I'll show you how to put resin in, because I don't think I showed anyone how to put resin in properly last time, so we'll do that. So once once we've got the model ready, we can put it on the USB stick. With this resin, essentially, the, there's a really good video by Goober Town Hobbies, which I'll leave a link in the description, that explains how resin connects together when we cure it with the UV. But essentially, it's uh, the way the polymers join together it's fairly random so you have to shake this up like mad and the, the more you shake it the better print you're going to get so So I'm just using the included USB stick for now. A lot of people complain about them. I've not really had many issues with them. So once we put the USB stick in, we'll go back. We'll go to, we could always do a, we could always do a tank check. Essentially there's two ways you can check the tank. You can just use a tank clean and then press next. And what you'll see is the entire screen should light up. And if nothing happens, that means you've got a dead screen. Or as you can see from mine, without breaking the USB, there's a nice light coming through. We'll close that and then we'll do a exposure test. We should light up a nice square. Oh, even better, it actually has the Elgu, the Elgu logo. <laughs> but now we've seen that that's working, um, we've shaken up the resin quite a bit. So let's uh, have a look at it, let's, let's go. So I decided to print this uh, model by Makers Cult. This is a called the Krieg Bust, which was like a 2000 Patreon or 2000 follower giveaway or something. I'll leave a link to the model in the description. You can find it on Thingiverse if not, but I printed this at 150%. So the Mars has quite a large vol build volume at 129 by 80 by 160 mil. So I decided to just like try and max it out as much as possible. So I've hollowed the model to, I think it was two mil, a uh, 2.1 mil wall thickness and then I've put some holes in his head and he's got a hole where the stand goes. So I printed the body separately and then I printed his hat and stand on a separate plate as well. I actually printed this at the stock slicing settings. So this is what, after I put in the settings for the Mars Pro 2, these were the stock settings. So it was like a 2.5 second exposure time for each layer compared to the original Mars, which is on average about eight seconds. This is obviously quite quick. Uh, the bottom layers are only 35 seconds each and I left the lift speed at 80 mil a minute, which in my opinion is rather fast. And in my opinion, if I was gonna do this to just print 
anything, I would have slowed this right down, but I decided to just try it out, go big as possible, and just see what happens. So it took about five hours to print. On an original Mars, if I was gonna go with base settings, since you'd be looking at more like eight and a half to nine hours to print this. So obviously a lot quicker with that 2K screen being able to, re to cure the resin at 2.5 seconds. So here's a quick montage of the print coming out. <laughs> And then obviously this is water washable resin, so I've only ever really printed with the ABS light grey or the standard grey resin from Elgoo. Um, so this water washable resin was a little bit weird, wash it uh, like in warm water. And I think I was doing this, I was getting my girlfriend to film this at like 1 in the morning because I was too excited to leave it. So this is at like 1am but they essentially they said to wash it in warm water, like rinse it out as much as possible and then use the little brush that comes with the resin to like get into all the nooks and crannies. So I normally clean prints in an ultrasonic, I normally rinse them in uh, isopropyl alcohol and then I clean them in an ultrasonic cleaner for actually curing them but with this I'm just purely using warm water in a pickle jar. I'm doing it the old fashioned, the grubby way. No ultrasonic cleaner this time. I'm purely just rinsing it as much as I can and I'm just like scrubbing it with the brush and just like splashing around and making a right mess. Obviously I decided to do this on a white battle mat so this was a great idea. <laughs> and I was really impressed with it. Like it came out really, really well. Uh, this is this is, this version has got a gloss varnish on it now, but I'll pull up footage of two versions with with and without gloss varnish finish. But the the clear green is really re a really really nice color, and I'm really surprised at how crisp it is. To say I printed it like hardly any any exposure. I just I cured this in a, a normal UV way afterwards, but the crispness of the model, like even like for the helmet, like the Imperial Eagle, which came out absolutely fantastic. And overall, to say this was just washed in warm water, I'm still quite baffled by it. The water washable resin is a little bit more expensive to buy off the shelf, only by a couple of pounds or a couple of dollars if you're in the US. But the fact that I just washed this in water and I didn't need IPA, the main cost now in the in the time of the pandemic with the virus going around, like IPA is really hit and miss for prices at the minute. So to, to say I can just wash this in warm water and then that's it, it's ready to go. It was really, really quite baffling. <laughs> what I will say is even though you are washing it in water, it doesn't mean you can do it in a sink. It should be quite obvious, but it is still a resin, it is still toxic, so make sure you dispose of it correctly. Let the water evaporate if you can, and then dispose of the resin. It can be washed in water, but that water is a toxic waste after you've used it, so make sure you dispose of it properly. But yeah, I was really, really impressed with the speed that this printed. Obviously, I only have this to compare to a Saturn, but this is still a little printer to me. And, you know, for the price that this, I think I said, I think it's like 300 quid or just less than 300 quid. And to get this sort of quality print in like six hours, I was really, really, really impressed. And when Elegoo emailed me and told me about it, they said this is better suited because of the 2K screen. It's better suited to the water washable resin. And I don't know why. And I'm probably going to be able to link an article or something in the description to tell you why. But I decided to try out using my own standard ABS light grey. So this is just like not essentially normal resin. And I decided to print another model. So I originally printed it with the standard settings as well. And But it did fail initially because this is a little bit larger. It's a little bit wider. Um, so I actually slowed this down. I actually gave this a three second exposure. It had 35 seconds for the bottom layers. But I changed it to a 50 millimeter lift speed rather than 80. And, and that really helped. This model is by Sally Factory. This is the Wolf Wolfgang. I keep calling it Wolfgang, but it's actually Wolf Fang Bust. So this is a Space Wolf inspired model. Um, I did actually have a fail with this, but this is totally my own fault, it's not the model. So this is printed at 150%. 
I've hollowed it. They do have a hollow version, but I actually hollowed this myself because I didn't want any holes in the arms. So I put a hole in where the head slots in and where in, in the bottom as well. So if you did want to put it on the stand, then you could. So when I was supporting this, I actually didn't raise the Z axis. So it was, I printed the body by itself and then I printed the head and the backpack together. So when I printed the body, I printed it in this axis and I left the, one of the teeth uh, was touching the plate and then it's obviously got all mangled in with my supports, which is honestly totally fine. Also, because of the way I've hollowed it, where the shoulder pad or the pollen meets the fur here, there's actually a slight hole, so some excess like IPA diluted resin poured out and cured on there, but never mind, we'll get over that. So this was printed at 150%. I had a little crack as well, go across the backpack, but that's probably to do with my curing. So if I wasn't gonna do this again, I'd print the backpack again, just to make sure it's okay. But this was just a test model, so it was more to prove a detail of the printer and how well it could print something rather than like my curing, my curing solution, which is clearly bad. <laughs> so overall, using the printer is really straightforward. If you've got any experience with resin printing, then you've probably done all the processes are exactly the same. Like found that the more I look into different resin printers, they all seem to react, act in the same way. All the controls are the same. So it's all relatively straightforward once you've first got your head around it. I will say with the, the Mars Pro 2, with that extra carbon filter in there, I actually, it, I don't know scientifically how much difference it made, but it definitely, like, it was definitely a good peace of mind whilst I was, like, had the printer behind me or was in another room. Having that extra filter in there was really nice to have, just to just to be like, say, look, it's going through a filter, so it's obviously not as bad coming through. What I will say, though, is the seal that comes with the, the lid. Now, when you take the lid off, the part with the seal on actually scrapes past or rubs past the L brackets, which hold the vat in. So what happened was, is every time I went to like get some footage or have a look at the print to make sure it's printing okay, the seal rubbed against it and so much so it fell off and almost fell in the resin every single time. So I've actually glued mine on now. So I've actually glued it in the four corners and then a few extra little places where it's where it's gonna rub against the L. And it holds on way better, but I've not glued it enough that I can't take it off. It's just like little dots just to support it so it doesn't fall off when I take the every time I take the lid off because that was very frustrating. But I will say I'm really impressed with the printer. It's got a 2K screen. My Saturn has a 4K screen, but I'm I, I, if I was going to buy a printer, I'd be really chuffed with a Mars as well. So it's kind of like if I was going to recommend this to you, it's kind of like how much space do you have and how much of a budget do you have? If you have an unlimited budget and unlimited space, I'd get a Saturn because you can do bigger stuff. But if you have a restricted budget and restricted space, then I definitely recommend this Mars Pro 2. Obviously, Elegoo sent this to me to review, so you can take my opinion with a pinch of salt. But I would recommend it and I'd be happy with it. I mean, I said, look at these prints are actually, I'm actually really impressed with these prints. This model was absolutely fantastic. And I said, shout out to Salish Factory. I'll leave a link to them in the description. This is a paid STL but I'm def I really like it. I'm definitely gonna print a few more because I'm gonna give this one to Tanker and then print one for myself as well. I might actually get this on the Saturn and do it even bigger, which would be really fun. So shout out to those guys for sending the files through. Shout out to Elgu for sending the resin and the printer to go with it. Again, the clear green is a really nice color. And now I've got, I've got clear red and clear green now. So I've got some ideas for Christmas trees, which I'm gonna try out. I'm gonna like try that thing where you like change the resin halfway through the printer to get different colors, which would be really fun. But thank you very much for watching this video. Hope you've enjoyed it. I am really impressed with this printer. And again, I would recommend it. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you've got any questions about the Mars Pro 2 or about anything I do to be printed, then do let me know down in the comments. I'll try and answer where I can. If I can't find out, I will try and find somewhere to help you. Also, I should say that I uh, I will leave links in the description to all the resin, the printers, uh, anything that I use for 3D printing in the description down below. They are Amazon affiliate links, so if you do buy anything through there, it does support the channel as well. So I appreciate it if you would. If you did enjoy it, then please consider subscribing, liking the video, and sharing it with a friend if you, if you think they'd find it helpful as well. Otherwise, have a great day. Thanks again, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye-bye now.